Um, today our topic is enzymes. You might have heard me slip that vocabulary word in the last class, our last lecture class, um, when I was talking about proteins, all right? So uh, we've heard this vocabulary word very briefly before, try to sneak it in there. So enzymes are a group of proteins. So they're a type of protein. And these proteins uh, manage the rate, that means how fast or how slow metabolic reactions happen. So they act as catalysts. So there's another new vocabulary word on this slide. We've got enzymes, and then we also have this word catalyst. So catalysts speed up chemical reactions. Uh, and remember, we've got this life process, ding, 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 one of the five, metabolism. So uh, enzymes are involved in metabolism. Remember, metabolism is the chemical reactions that happen inside cells, all right? So metabolism, that is the actual chemical reactions. Uh, and so enzymes help out with those chemical reactions. Uh, let's take a generalized look at what they look like. So what they look like. So here, right here um, we've got an enzyme. Um, and then you'll notice it's got this kind of, it, it almost looks like teeth on this picture. This is called the active site, the active site. This is where uh, stuff involved in the chemical reaction is going to attach to the enzyme or bind to the enzyme. That stuff is called substrate or another vocabulary word for this is one from way back uh, when we were talking about cellular energy and that is a reactant. So remember, way back, reactants go into chemical uh, reactions and products come out, right? So on the left side, we have reactants. We do a chemical reaction and we get products. Oh, is it going to fit? <laughs> Just barely. <laughs> So the enzymes are involved in this part of the chemical reaction right here, all right? So they react with the reactant, and then out of this we get products. All right, so we're going to um, watch a quick clip uh, to see how this action happens. Um, so at this time, if you're at home, we need you to come into the Microsoft Teams so you can see the clip and hear the clip. Um, so again, if you're at home, we need you to shift into Microsoft Teams so you can see us uh, here at school, and uh, we're going to play that for you. Most chemical reactions do not occur spontaneously in a cell. Instead, cells rely on proteins called enzymes to kickstart chemical reactions and speed them up enabling cells to get the most out of the energy sources available to them. Enzymes have a unique way of kickstarting reactions. They work by binding to one or more specific molecules called reactants or substrates. Binding occurs at a special region on the enzyme called the active site. Once the substrates bind to the active site, they form what's called an enzyme substrate complex. As the enzyme and substrates begin to react, some of the chemical bonds in the substrates begin to weaken, causing them to link together. Eventually, the chemical reactions at the active site lead to the formation of a different molecule. This is referred to as the product. Once the reaction has occurred, the product is released from the active site. The enzyme returns to its original state and is free to react again with another set of substrates. So that was it, pretty quick. Um, you can see, again, we had those vocabulary words that we have the reactants going into the chemical reaction. Those reactants are also sometimes called substrates. They go in and bind to the enzyme. The enzyme speeds up that chemical reaction, and then we get products out of that chemical reaction. In this chemical reaction that you guys just watched with that, that particular enzyme, you saw it took two substrates and put them together. So it rearranged the atoms 
um, from two separate molecules to one molecule, right? So specific type of enzymes do specific reactions. So this green enzyme you see here, imaginary green enzyme, its job is to take these two very specific substrates, put them together, uh, and make a product. Like that's the only thing that that one can do, okay? Other enzymes, like this purple one here, it does the opposite. This purple enzyme, uh, you could see we've got the reactant coming in there. The green, I'm sorry, the red thing uh, is the reactant. Try to make my A's a little better. Um, the reactant is going in. Chemical reaction is happening, right? I know it's kind of small. Um, and then in the end, the products, The products are two items. So here, this type of enzyme did a different reaction where it took a reactant and then broke it apart. This kind of enzyme would be really great like for our digestive system, right? Our stomach breaks down the food that we eat. It uses tons of enzymes to do this exact thing, to take the food that we eat and break it down into smaller pieces into smaller um, products that your body can actually use. Okay, um, last thing that I want to talk about is uh, graphing chemical reactions. Um, so on my graph here, you can see uh, we've got two lines. There's a red one and there's a blue one, and I'll try to use the correct color markers. All right, um, let's start with the red one, okay? So this red curve, you'll see that it is labeled without enzyme. So if the chemical reaction is happening, here it's happening without an enzyme, when it's happening, it takes a lot of energy, that's why it spikes there, um, to make it happen. So on our um, y-axis is energy. So the actual line that we're looking at is the amount of energy that it takes to do that chemical reaction. So you can see without the enzyme, like it takes a lot of energy, it spikes. Um, if you think of this as a hill, like out in nature, right? You're like hiking. If you're walking up this hill, it is going to take a lot of energy to get your behind up that very steep hill. It's also gonna take you a while because you you might have to take a break. Like you're gonna have to go all the way up and then all the way down. So without an enzyme, chemical reactions take a lot of energy, way more energy. That energy is called activation energy, and you can kind of see it right here. So the activation energy um, for a chemical reaction without an enzyme, there's a lot of energy that you need to do it, all right? Uh, this chemical reaction can happen on its own, right? It can happen without enzymes, but it takes a lot of energy and a lot of time. Um, now let's talk about our enzymes, right? Uh, oh, that, that's what we're learning about today. How do they help out? So here's our line um, in blue when we do the chemical reaction with the enzyme. So first thing you might notice is that the, the line doesn't spike as much. The hill is much smaller. It's much less steep, that hill. If I was walking over the blue hill, it would take a lot less energy and a lot less time than it would on this red hill. So with the enzyme, it takes less energy for the chemical reaction to happen. All right, remember that it's called activation energy. So it takes less energy. There's a lower activation energy. It took a lot less just like it would take you a lot less energy to climb over this little hill um, compared to the big red hill, okay? 